Have you ever been reading a celebrity pastor's blog post or listening to a famous Bible teacher and something jumps out to you and you're just like, how am I the only person seeing this thing? Why isn't anyone talking about it? Well, you're not alone. Welcome to Underdog Theology. This podcast is about looking at what's happening in evangelicalism. I'm talking tweets, I'm talking books, blogs, videos, all of it, and judging it according to scripture. Whether that's reacting to celebrity pastors, teasing about the latest ridiculous battle in the culture war, or just having a little bit of fun together, this show is for all the folks who feel like they're on the outside looking in, who feel like they don't have a voice, who feel like they're an underdog. Welcome. To underdog theology. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Underdog Theology. I am wearing an appropriate shirt today, and I, I made a decision. I think every time I talk about Mark Driscoll, I'm going to wear a WWE shirt. I think that's just what I'm going to do from now on, because we're talking about the bell. You I messed it up. <laughs> We're not professionally. The Bellevue Brawler, Mark Driscoll. Uh, it's it's a thing. If you if you're not okay with having a little bit of fun about this kind of stuff, this ain't the show for you. Uh, let's start off with talking to people who are inevitably going to find this today. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of people. <laughs> I just I just realized that because I looked at my analytics right before hopping on, and all the videos about Mark Driscoll are going up which like not a great thing <laughs> like i'm not i'm not really all that excited about it because i know what that means it means that people who love mark driscoll are on the lookout for stuff and they they're going to be commenting so do me a favor if you are a fan of this channel or you just want to do me a solid hit the like button because there are going to be I think a lot of people today who are going to uh, not like what I have to say, or at least aspects of what I have to say. We're talking about the Mark Driscoll stuff, because if you're unaware, some of you guys don't hang out on Twitter like I do. And so you're just like, I don't, why are we talking about him again? Like, why do we have to bring him up all the time? Well, he is becoming more and more of an influence. So we have to continue to talk about him because he's continuing to grow in influence. And if people, even small basement dwellers like me, if we don't talk about him and call out some of the stuff that's going on, nobody else is going to. And he's just going to continue to progress. So I hope that the people who are searching for Mark Driscoll today and wondering about all this kind of stuff, I hope they do stumble across this video and give me a chance, all right? Because there are things that we need to discuss about this whole incident that happened, I found out on Twitter, uh, because that's how I find out about everything, essentially. Uh, news, whatever, I don't go to CNN, Fox News, none of that kind of stuff anymore. CBC here in Canada. Like, I don't, I don't do that. I just go to Twitter because Twitter tells me everything I need to know. And no, I'm not going to call it X and I probably never will. Maybe at some point I will. Uh, but I'm going to listen to what I see on Twitter and see what's going on. That's what I do. And uh, so this weekend, it was just Mark Driscoll everywhere. Everywhere Driscoll. Unless you had that, you know, muted or something. Uh, but the reason why is because he was kicked off a conference stage. Ooh, we got some drama. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about why it happened, uh, what led to it. Is it was he right? Was he right? All right. Now, I also know that a lot of us, uh, if you've been around the channel at all, you know most of my thoughts probably about Mark Driscoll, and uh, you probably have some pretty concrete feelings yourself. And I want us to try to set that aside today, just to set it aside just for a little bit as we just think about this idea in this topic uh, of what happened. And we'll get into the, the nitty gritties of it in just a, a minute. We have a couple of videos to check out. But first, I have to say hi to all my buddies, all the underdogs in the chat. We've got RJ hopping in. Steven Tallis says, somebody passed the popcorn. 
Uh, do people have watch parties of this stream? <laughs> I know we hanging hanging with the the goings on on Saturday on our chill stream. They, apparently, they have us so on so much that uh, the kids know you know how to impersonate me, which is pretty flattering and also just crazy. <laughs> but Corey Tippett is here and says he's late. Just barely, man. No worries. Basically, if you ever are feeling like, oh, Dean started four minutes ago, you haven't missed a thing. Okay? <laughs> like, uh, these are long streams. People keep telling me, get to the point. And I say, get your own channel. <laughs> All right? I have fun doing this stuff. And I mess around with my buddies. And if you don't like that, if you're like, get to the, the facts. Let's look at the videos. Get to the content. That's not what we're about here. This this is a whole vibe, okay? Like, we just hang out, we relax, and we talk about some of the stuff going on with these celebrity pastors. Uh, we've got Whitney here. I miss the letters from the Culture War segment. They're coming. They're coming back. It's It's been a difficult season as we're adjusting with one of my sons and his uh, diabetes that is constantly changing. And we've had some ups and downs that have kind of taken me away from a lot of my projects. Uh, but it is coming. Not to just let's that's how I can guilt trip people into me not making stuff. <laughs> like, My son has diabetes. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, one girl army says, I think you need to ask uh, audio a about using parts of their song. Oh, uh, audio adrenaline for underdog. I mean, it's there. I, I we could also go the secular route. I know <gasps> shocker secular music. Uh, we could go Imagine Dragons, which I, I'm not a huge fan of the band, but I will say that du that song Underdog uh, kind of rocks. OK, uh, we've got Jason Nickel here and says Drisky Business needs to be a regular show segment. I mean, we did uh, make a segment for Mark Driscoll, uh, but it's mostly about marketing. And I feel like this is a bigger topic, so it's going to it's getting its own you know whole show today. Uh, we've got uh, Shinan Shinanja. I hate it when I butcher names. Hey, church, missed y'all. Uh, not a church, uh, just just a group of people online, but uh, appreciate you being here. I saw someone talk. I need to go back up. I need to go back up because what was this? John Black says, I see the MXPX CD in the background. As a fellow PXer, what's your favorite track? Nice NXT shirt. Um, first, thank you for the you know, WWE. Um, also for the MXPX What's my favorite MXPX song. I mean, I feel like it's such like a, a stereotype to just be like move to Bremerton, but, uh, it's one of them. Uh, middle name, my middle name, uh, it just fits. Although wrecking hotel rooms. All right. Everyone sleeps on that album. That album is fire. All right. Um, let's see. We've got Wendy is here. We've got all kinds of people. We got Dr. Ed Rominus in the chat. Uh, we've got RJ. I love the song, uh, the long stream. I appreciate that. Some of you guys get what I'm trying to do here. Uh, Jack saying Tacoma in the house. Tacoma, the hardest, the hardest city <laughs> in Washington State. Uh, hope you're surviving there, Jack. Uh, <laughs> He can handle himself. Uh, Wendy says, uh, Dean himself is laid often. JK kind of. Mm, my kid has diabetes. How, how many times can I use that? I wonder. Uh, Sam says, Drisky was right to call them out on the male stripper. All right. We're going to say some words today. I always want to be clear. Like this is a family friendly show until it ain't. <laughs> and I always want to make sure that you guys know when it's not. And there are going to be some things that we're going to be talking about because of the nature of the story today, that if you have little ears around, you might not want them to hear everything. So headphones on, earbuds in, door shut. I don't know. Whatever you got to do. I'm just saying. I, I always appreciate because I got kids running around all the time. That you just got to let people know when you're talking about certain things. I don't want to surprise anybody. Uh, let's see. Chester. Dude, it's been a while. Uh, hello, Brother Dean. Long time no chat. How are you? I was sick when I spent uh, vacation in Manila, Philippines. Please pray for me. Of course we will be praying for you, Chester. Uh, Chester, man, he he he's he's a guy from long, long time ago. Like, I haven't seen you in a bit, bud, but it seems like you've been busy. 
Uh, but wow, uh, we will be praying. Glad to have you in the chat. Jordan is here and says, my group chat with a bunch of Bible college bros is going crazy over this wild Driscoll conference drama. Interested to hear your take. All right, well, let's get into the take then. And in order to do that, all right, we got, we got to go over to, uh, as I push buttons here, we got to go over here. All right, let's take a look. This is what happened. talk about how to be an Elijah. And how to deal with they have a Jezebel. All right, so this is Mark Driscoll. He's speaking at the Stronger Men's Conference in, was it Missouri or something? Uh, but he's speaking at this conference, this is John Lindell's conference. It's a pretty big deal. Lots of people come to this thing, and he's one of the speakers this year. Uh, if we'll, we'll talk about the connection between John Lindell and Mark Driscoll in a little bit, but... Uh, this, this is, this is interesting what's going to happen here. So he's talking about, you know, we're going to, we're going to be discussing what it means to be an Elijah and how we need more Elijahs, which just so happens to also be the main thing about his book that he has out. Uh, but I'm sure that's a coincidence. So let's, let's just watch this. But let me do this. Um, the hat's coming off. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say. Okay. But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. It's right here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. I want you to notice um, how much liberties he takes with biblical concepts, okay? And applying it to a specific scenario that we'll take a look at in a minute. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. Did you hear that? The, the audio, like obviously it's just someone taking, you know, they're not going to put this out. <laughs> <laughs> like stronger men's conference they're not going to be putting this video out uh so it's just people with you know their phones out but you heard a voice from the crowd saying mark yelling it see our god is not arrogant he doesn't us and our god is humble he descends and then he swallowed a sword you're out of line mark and jesus cried okay pastor john i'll receive that Thank you. Okay. So you saw it there. You know, he, he's beginning his sermon. He was up there for like a couple minutes before this talking about Elijah, how we need more Elijah's. And I'm going to tell you how to be an Elijah. But before we talk about being an Elijah, we have to deal with the Jezebel spirit. And the Jezebel spirit is here at this conference. And the reason why the Jezebel spirit is here is this. Now, he talked about it being male stripper. Let's see. Also, that's not something I ever thought I'd say on underdog theology. He talked about it being male stripper. Let's see. <laughs> Weird stuff going on. Okay, 
And then, uh, then he goes on to lick it. <laughs> so, uh, weird, <laughs> a weird way to open up a conference, like, like any conference. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know if you were like really into stock trading, if that started your stock trading conference, like, uh, the, the be weirded out too. Uh, so this is who he's saying has this Jezebel spirit and this man gets up and the, the, the pole is there and that's like the shrub pool and you know, like all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, I'm going to shock some of you in saying like, I actually kind of agree with Mark Driscoll. <laughs> all right. I kind of do agree with him. I think it's totally inappropriate. Uh, for a, a conference setting that's focused on biblical teaching, or at least, you know, what they say is biblical teaching, uh, to have an event like this where you open up with something so weird. And, you know, I know some people will be like, it's just acrobatics. You know what? Like, I've seen that going around. Everyone has their point of view, and I'm not saying yours is invalid. But when I watch that thing, it doesn't just feel like acrobatics. Like also like even like the drama of taking off your shirt like that, like I know he's like doing it to the beat, like to the beat of the music, like the dun, 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 but it's, it's weird thing. <laughs> like <laughs> I think that goes like above just having like an acrobatic, which is still just, I mean, it's, it's clown stuff, right? Like it's just clown like behavior at a, at a, you know, mega church level, you know, like you just bring in people literally just to entertain them while you're getting the stage set up properly. I don't know. Uh, but like the, the unbuttoning is what gets me of like, wait, what's going on here? Now there's all this other stuff and I'm sure tons of other channels will do a lot of research and go into. And like, I feel like uh, I even saw uh, what's his face. Uh, Justin Peters uh, say something about how he's going to tackle it in a video. Uh, so there, are, this is going to be one of those things that finally people are like, okay, now we'll talk about Mark Driscoll. They don't want to talk about Mark Driscoll about any of the other stuff, but now because of this, now they're going to talk about it. And I'm sure they're going to dive into the fact that this guy uh, who's up there performing and, you know, doing the sword stuff and climbing the pole and doing all the weird things, you know, and doing the acrobatics. Let's again, he seems pretty talented. I couldn't do that. All right. Uh, I don't think Mark Driscoll could do that either of going up there and like holding himself and whatnot. Like there's an entertainment value to that of not, you know, just like, Ooh, he's taking off his shirt. <laughs> like there's something to like, that's athletic and that is entertaining. And that's the reason why, uh, you know, it does so well at all these different places all over the world. But this specific guy, which I'm sure everyone will dive into. Um, and I don't think that this guy ever thought that this would be what would happen with him coming to this conference and doing this, but there are going to be tons of videos about this guy and his past and how he went to, I think it was Britain's got talent and performed there. And he has been a male stripper, or at least that's what I'm seeing online. All right. Uh, I don't really care to do a whole bunch of research about male strippers. So I'm not going to say that like, that's 100% like truthful. That's the things that I've seen people share stuff online and, uh, you know, it seems legit. So they're going to attach everything to that and say, like, see, um, I don't really care about any of that. Like, it's to me, it's just as obvious as, you know, doing the buttons to the music and taking off your shirt and then doing the thing. Like, that's, I don't know any guys that are just like, yeah, like manly. Ooh, let's go. Let's climb this pole. Uh, this isn't like lumberjack competition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I th I think there's something incredibly like just foolish about having this whole thing happen anyways. But I do think that there's something effeminate. I'll use that word effeminate about what's happening here on stage. That being said, you know, I, I think that Mark Driscoll, uh, I think that Mark Driscoll is going to profit off of this. I don't believe that this was a spur of the moment decision, especially since he even referenced that he has been up since 1 a.m. 
Now, I don't know whether that's true. There's like who who could even check on that kind of stuff? He says that he's been praying since 1 a.m. for all these people because of this Jezebel spirit. So a little bit of the details of when this stuff happened. OK, this happened Friday night. Like this was the opening with this guy getting up on stage and doing all that stuff. That's the opening. Uh, he is speaking Saturday morning, I believe. So he like I, I saw something about like 11 a.m. Uh, so he he's speaking in the morning. So there's been a lot of time that has elapsed. And part of this story is that Mark Driscoll didn't talk to anybody about this. Uh, he didn't talk to John Lindell, obviously, because John Lindell, who is the, the guy, the main guy there, and let's get into the details a little bit. John Lindell was the first pastor, uh, other than, uh, Morris who had, uh, John MacArthur or that John MacArthur. I don't know why that name popped in my head. Um, uh, but had, uh, Mark Driscoll come up on stage and like pray for him at a conference. John Lindell was one of the first guys to be like, he's good for ministry and invite him to speaking engagements and be on the board for his church plan. Like that, John Lindell and Mark Driscoll go back a ways. Uh, and he was like the guy who was pushing Mark and being like, he should go back into ministry after everything at Mars Hill. After, let's be clear, once again, Mark Driscoll ran away from church discipline within the church that he planted with the elders that he was responsible for bringing up and training. And when they called him out on his sin, he decided to take off and tell the world that this was a plot from Satan, uh, that this was a trap and that God told him that he had to go. Oh, wow. I, again, my stream deck is just busted as far as how many people are watching. Uh, people are telling me there's 156 people watching right now and only 46 likes. So, uh, Let's try to get it up there. If you watch this show regularly, please hit the like button. And if you like what I'm talking about, hit the like button too. Uh, join the 100 like army. It's like the seven nation army, but we don't really do a lot other than clicking a button. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're like, it, that's, that's what's going on. John Lindell is yelling that, that you need to get off the stage. That's enough. Uh, and then he got up on stage and uh, this is what this is what he put. This is a quote from Baptist News. I think they got it. Mark was out of line. He told the audience. Lindell barked amidst. I don't know. These are the words that they chose. All right. These are not the words I'm choosing. Uh, Lindell barked amidst the thundering wrath. If Mark wanted to say that, he should have said it to me. He didn't. Matthew 18. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. I talked to Mark for a half hour. I don't know if the exclamation points should be there, but they're there. Uh, there was not one word of that. He's out of line. If he wants to say it, he can say it to me. So this tells me that Mark didn't talk to anybody because it's not like Mark Driscoll and this pastor are like not friends. It's not like, uh, you know, sometimes you go to a speaking engagement and you don't know anybody there, right? Like you just go because you were invited and it's kind of awkward and you're just like, what am I even supposed to do? I'll hang out over by the coffee table and kind of like have weird small talk with people, you know, like that stuff happens. All right. Or maybe in the megachurch world, you know, you go to the green room with the M&Ms and uh, but not the green M&Ms. It's a green room, but no green M&Ms. Uh, so you, you're you're just hanging out there until it's time to speak. But that's not what's happening here. All right. This is buddies who uh, had, you know, the buddy come to the conference. That buddy has an issue with stuff. And instead of going to the buddy and saying like, Hey, you know, I, I've got some issues. He just did it on stage. Uh, obviously Lindell felt betrayed. Now I'm told that they came back out and had a conversation. Uh, some people say that it's 30 minutes. I don't know. There's no video. And again, it's not like a uh, stronger men's conference. It's going to be like, hey, want to see all the drama? Here's the video from the conference. You know, they're going to show all the video of other things. Uh, but like that, that's what's going on with this thing. So for me to hear this, you know, I, I have a lot of issues with this first off, but also it just tells me that Mark Driscoll did this on purpose. 
Like he, he had the relationship. He had the opportunity, right? Like uh, Lindell says, like he, 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 we talked for a half hour and he didn't say anything then. This is planned. If you know Mark Driscoll's history, I know a lot of people are just stumbling across Mark Driscoll over the last few years because of his social media. I know some of you guys, you you just feel like the rise and fall of Mars Hill was a hit piece. Uh, I would encourage you, please go and listen to those episodes. I'm not saying they're perfect, but I think there's a lot there that you need to hear before you start really investing in this teacher. All right. This guy is a marketing genius. All right. In a world where people just don't take marketing seriously <laughs> with Christianity, it seems like so many like of the rock solid voices, they just don't care about marketing. Uh, but the people who are on the fringes, theologically, they love marketing. And so Mark Driscoll is one of those guys. And he got his voice out there and became a household name very quickly, all because of his marketing. He knows how to capitalize on a moment. And I think what we saw here and especially because of this, he saw a moment and I'm not saying that he didn't have issues with it, like that he, he contrived those issues. All right. Um, he obviously had issues <laughs> with, with what was going on and it would fit for everything that we know about Mark Driscoll that he would look at this and go like, what? We'll talk about like some of the background about that here in a minute, but it makes sense that he would be upset about it. So I'm not saying he, he's contriving this, that everything is a lie. But he's capitalizing on it. And what's happening is that people are going to listen to this. They're not going to think about this. All they're going to see is the video. And they're going to be saying things like this. This is from Justin Dean, uh, who was a pastor out of nowhere, by the way. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I know some people. I know people who know people. And uh, this this guy wasn't like really all that involved with churches, uh, but he was in marketing. Uh, Mark Driscoll hired him at Mars Hill to take over the marketing and became a pastor out of nowhere. Uh, so he's he's he's, you know, Mark Driscoll, like the reason why, you know, Mark Driscoll partially is because of Justin Dean. Uh, so proud of my friend, Pastor Mark, for this loving, humble, respectful, but bold his words as hell and always delivering the truth. That's the mark. I know this is what's going to be taken and put out there. All right. This is the message that Mark Driscoll is standing up for righteousness. Like, and the message that's going to be out there. Isn't that, that this was, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, like I said, uh, we could have some people in the chat, uh, I appreciate that, Michael. Uh, we got some mods who were on it. Uh, but I know that that's going to happen more and more, especially from the Mark Driscoll crew. Uh, there are plenty of fanboys that will say all kinds of stuff and fangirls uh, who will say whatever they want because they love their Mark Driscoll. And this message is going to get put all over the place that Mark Driscoll is standing up for righteousness. They're not going to think about it being an acrobatic thing. They're just going to hear there was a male stripper at a conference and Mark Driscoll got up on stage and did something about it. And then he got opposition, but he stood firm. You know, he was bold in that moment. He was courageous. He was a real man. You know, they'll use the branding TM right after me, a real man. <laughs> like they'll use the branding and they'll say he's a real man. Guys, once again, this guy who's being lauded as this courageous figure ran away from church discipline. And, and it's church discipline that was stacked in his favor. All right, this wasn't like you go to a church and you're having all this opposition. This is the way that he said it. He went to, he planted a church and it was in this woke culture. And so this woke culture was taking root in his church. That's the way he's putting it. But let's remember, he was the planter. He was the guy who reorganized the entire organization to where there was very little accountability for himself and what little accountability like came, came forward and said like, Hey, let's actually do the thing. Even if we have little power, let's show that little power. And he ran for the Hills and planted his own church. That is not courageous. That is not being a real man. 
when Mark Driscoll has been given the opportunity to show himself to be this bold, courageous figure, he hasn't. But he goes in front of a video camera and he says it. You know, he he, he does things online and says it. Or in this moment. And I will say, there you have to have at least some boldness within you to go up on stage and say that. I don't know if he thought that John Lindell would be okay with it or what, or whether it was strategic in that he knew there would be so much controversy about it. But I do think that he capitalized on the moment to show himself to be this courageous Elijah while he was in the green room with this guy and could have brought it up. Right now, when it comes to this whole thing about, you know, Matthew 18, this is always the thing that people... Uh, people take and be like, oh, Matthew 18, Matthew 18. That's for a local church context. They're not in a local church context. Now, you could take that as a rule of thumb that maybe we should use that to how we communicate with one another and deal with conflict. You could do that. But to say like, Matthew 18, he didn't do it. That's not that's not the case, first off. Uh, that's always what people say when they do public things and then get called out publicly and then they get mad that they were called out publicly and say, why didn't you come to me privately? That's always a thing. But when you're right there in the room and you could have had this conversation talking to like literally the guy who could do something about it, right? Like, or at least correct it or get up and say like, that was wrong or that was weird like it's, it's right there. And he didn't want to do that. He waited till the camera was on so he could take off the hat and get down on a knee and be like, Hey, I'm the courageous figure here. Now, what motivations exactly? I'm not going to speculate exactly of what he was doing, but that's the facts like that. That's what happened. According to John Lindell. Now they got up on stage and, you know, had some kind of peaceful outcome to this. Uh, but also that's something you got to do, right? Like I've, I've been in those moments, you got to deescalate stuff. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that's what's going on. But let's also take a look at uh, a couple more things about it. Uh, Mark Driscoll tweeted this yesterday, which I find very interesting. You know, uh, he's talking about all this Jezebel stuff, uh, which also, um, you know, there was a dude stripping uh, or if you want to, like uh, he he stripped his shirt off. All right. Um, I don't know what that has to do with women. <laughs> like, like as far as like blame the women is a Jezebel spirit. Uh, they just take that and use it as a blanket term to call out anything they don't like. It's a Jezebel spirit. Rebellion is a Jezebel spirit. Uh, effeminate, you know, actions are a Jezebel spirit. Anything they don't like right now, they're using it as like this you know, Jezebel spirit, but this is what he's going to do. Capitalizing on this moment, going to live stream every day this week to help everyone understand that Ahab, Jezebel and Elijah spirit, the same spirits are at work today. Get ready. And you know that during that stream, he will talk about how his book covers all this, all right? That's, that's what's going on. He's selling a book. He's selling a book and gaining promotion and all these people who don't know the backstory of Mark Driscoll, who might not know the relationship between John Lindell and Mark Driscoll, who, you know, don't understand that even like, guys, this wasn't the first time. Look at this. This is what this is the video from like years past. All right. Uh, that they're promoting using as promotion stuff. They do circus stuff at this stronger men's conference all the time. All right. So like. I, uh, I think that it was probably the wrong guy to bring in to do that performance, but it's like they would have circus stuff going on there anyways. All right. Like they, they're doing like weird flips and there's motocross and guys going in ramps and it's, it's a show. It's a show. Mark Driscoll knew that. Like the, again, th this is one of the guys that was like really found like helpful for him getting back into ministry. It's not like he's like oblivious to how they do their conferences. He's been there. All right. He knows what's going on there. He knows the whole vibe of this conference. And also, I will say, I think that there's something to the fact that Mark Driscoll probably feels trapped. I'm going to speculate on that a little bit. I think that he probably feels trapped with who he has sided with because he used to be in the somewhat reformed, very conservative world. Uh, so, you know, Caring a lot about theology, caring a lot about, you know, how the churches run and doing things that only scripture, um, 
you know, tells us to do as far as worship goes and all the conferences wouldn't be, you know, the showmanship lights everywhere, motocross guy doing acrobatic stuff. It wouldn't be anything like that. It would be everyone sitting there with a Bible and it's, uh, I'm not saying it's probably kind of boring. All right. It's, it's a little boring. Some of those conferences, <laughs> but like, that's the world that he came from. But because of what he did, because he ran away from church discipline, the only people who would really accept him were the people who go like, touch not God's anointed. Like you've got an anointing on you, Mark, you need to use that. And, you know, Satan's trying to bring you down. It's it's the hyper charismatic, not all charismatics, but the hyper charismatics that he ran to. And this is what they do. Like they're, they're going to have the acrobatics. They're going to do all the circus stuff at their conferences. They're all about the showmanship. So Mark Driscoll did this to himself. You know, he, he probably feels a little bit trapped that like, why are they doing all this stuff? If I don't know, I don't know. That's giving them a little bit more credit than I would like to. But I think that there's something to that. Uh, of him being like, ah, why, why is all this happening? You shouldn't have all these things at a conference. What do you think they do? Like, what do you, you've seen this is nothing new. You know, I will say taking the shirt off to the beat of that music to me is something that is like beyond just like, oh, that's dumb. You know, I could look at this and say, I think it's dumb. I think it's dumb to have that kind of stuff at a conference. Or I could look at the acrobat climbing a pole and, you know, doing all the, like the sword stuff. And I just think like, okay, you're like the, the guy, the, the Jedi kid on YouTube, but you got abs. All right. Like, I think it's dumb. <laughs> I, I don't like think that should be done at a conference, but you know, taking the shirt off. I think that's a step further than that. But like, it's not like Mark Driscoll was unaware that this stuff happens at these conferences, that they do all this kind of stuff, but he's going to use it. He's going to use it to further his stuff and to have more streams and to do all the things. And there are going to be people, maybe even people who are watching this live, maybe people who have already hit the dislike button who are going to be like, Hey, he's my guy man, we need voices like him. And they don't get the the history of it. They don't know who he is. They just see what he's presenting. They see his marketing and they're going to be just drawn into it. So that's why we're still talking about him. We're not talking about him because I know it's going to be popular. I actually hate it when some of these videos, some of them, not all of them, uh, but when some of them are really popular, it just tells me that more people are following after him. And guys, if you like that bold stuff, I'm telling you, there are people who will give you that who aren't Mark Driscoll. He's not the only voice out there. All right. He, he might be the voice that you like the most, but I'm telling you, if you want that kind of stuff, you could get that from a qualified person, not someone who runs away from church discipline, lies about it, says that, you know, all these elders were telling, telling him that, uh, he, they were going to tell everyone he was having an affair all right. No one says that. No one in any of that, you know, story of all these people who wrote letters, who signed the papers, who were there. No one said that was on the table. No one believed he was having an affair, but he went on stage and he lied about those men to make himself look better. To talk about all the people in the past, uh, you know, all the all the Calvinists, he, he'll bash those guys to make himself look better. This is what he does. Uh, so we're going to continue to talk about him because more and more people are just finding out. And I'm finding out as the further I go along with this thing, I'm finding out that people just forget about internet stuff <laughs> like the digital age, man, we have the shortest memory ever when it comes to drama guys, literally two and a half years ago. All right. We have the rise and fall of Mars Hill being the most popular podcast in the Christian world. All right. Being one of the more popular podcasts just in the world. And already people forget about it. Already people don't care about it. So, yeah, we got to keep on reminding all the people who are just finding him, who are just getting there and warning them that, yeah, like you don't have to listen to Mark Driscoll. If you like his stuff, I guarantee you, you will find another teacher who is saying the exact same stuff or at least... <laughs> I don't want you to find the exact same stuff, by the way, but from someone who is not Mark Driscoll, uh, there, there's stuff there that, you know, 
check out some of my other videos. I don't have time to go into every issue that <laughs> Mark Driscoll has, but uh, that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with this thing. Um, it's 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 ongoing. All right, let's let's bring the chat up and see what we got going on here. Uh, I know that there's probably not everything is going to agree with me about this, but let's go up. Uh, let's go starting with Jordan. If you're wrong in the way you're right, you're wrong, even though you're right. Okay. All right. Uh, and, uh, Joseph says, right, Dean, they're already doing it saying we need more men of God like Mark. Yep. Uh, it's all over the place and it's going to continue to be all over the place. I think that was the point of what Mark Driscoll was trying to do was to show himself to be that strong, courageous figure and try to show himself to be humble, right? Like why do you get on his knees? Like you take off your hat. Okay. So people can see you a little bit better. Um, I wouldn't because I just like wearing my hat, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you're showing yourself to be humble or at least trying to. Uh, and he said, just like a woman dances to tempt a man. Yeah. Some, some of the wording of that just like weird, like the way that he called it out, I don't think was right. Like if, if you're that guy, I don't know what his past is. Like, as far as like, yeah, he was in that life and maybe he got saved. He's at a Christian conference. Maybe that's a thing. And then to have that like rubbed in his face, like he might not have known exactly how to behave. There's all kinds of stuff. There's conversations that could be had, but I do think it was okay to be like, Hey, that, that's not the right way to start off a conference, but everything else attached to it. Uh, also I will say Mark Driscoll talks a lot about strip clubs and that's, that's kind of weird to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, like a woman dances at a strip club. I've heard him say that tons of times. And like, I didn't go to Marcel. <laughs> Like I just listen to online sermons <laughs> and uh, I've heard him say that a lot. Or uh, I lived in a neighborhood where there were strip clubs and it's just like, okay. Uh, Aaron says, yeah, when you go to the circus, expect to see shirtless men and leotards. Right. And like, I, again, I don't know. I've, I don't do acrobatic stuff. Like I don't, like, not only do I not do that, I don't like, I'm not going to go pay to go see something like that. So I don't know if that's like a norm of the unbuttoning, but to the music and everything, that's weird. And to be like, woo, <laughs> like I know there's certain showmanship of exaggerating physical movements to, you know, for a big audience, but it's a little much for me. Uh, so I'm all right with it. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, lot, lots of thoughts, I think from, from the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, the viewers were up to 180 at one point now down to 160. Looks like the mod hammer is sending the Mark fans away. Uh, I appreciate, uh, every mod who has done that. Uh, cause I knew that there was going to be some, you know, controversy about it. And as soon as I saw my videos going popular with Mark Driscoll stuff, I was like, Oh boy, it's going to be one of those kind of streams. Um, uh, Colin says, apparently he grew up next to a strip club, according to the elephant room. Number one. Yeah. I've heard him give several different accounts of where he grew up. Sometimes it's SeaTac, which is a pretty seedy area. Uh, sometimes it's federal way, like around that area. That's the one that I remember the most. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know where he grew up exactly. Renton. I I've also, I think I heard that. Uh, but Okay, there's a strip club. Welcome to America. Okay. <laughs> uh, James says, he did repent. It was his last sermon to the church before he left. You can find it online. Um, yeah, and then he ran for the hills. Like, that's not true repentance. True repentance isn't getting up on stage and saying, yes, I'm going to commit to this church discipline, and we're going to go through this process and just know, church, that I love you, and then not showing up the next week. That's not, that's not how repentance works. Repentance means not just a change of mind about your sin, but a change of mind about your sin toward God. Like you are going toward God. There's direction. And uh, direction would say church discipline, but he refused to go through with it. And let's be clear. Mark Driscoll has not said anything about the wrong that he has done in the past. He's called out everybody else about what they did and the plots that people said they would use had he gone through this, but they're not doing it. Uh, but he's, he's, he's not saying anything about himself. Uh, Danny, 
Uh, I love cringe content, and you always bring the goods. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty true. All right, let's go. Hey, buddy. Uh, let's go to the... You want to see a penalty? I'll show you a real penalty. Get out of my face, man. You want the iPad, buddy? I got, I got my littlest man just woke up from a nap. Because, again, we don't have a studio here. We have a basement. <laughs> yeah. Here you go, pal. At least I got a nice chair sitting here so he can he can watch that. All right. Uh, if you're new to the channel, this is when I deal with the comments that aren't so fun, but also kind of funny. All right. Let's deal with the first one. What's up? Oh, we got to get the chat going away. Lots of buttons to push, guys. It's hard. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's two minutes. Okay. All right. So uh, got a, got a theme going today. Uh, Mark Driscoll has not changed, which again, for all the Mark Driscoll fanboys who are going to be watching this stream, this is a Twitter encounter where uh, Mark Driscoll was like someone said like, hey, you hurt me in your ministry. And he literally used like the shack dunking and pushing away Jeff uh, to make fun of them. Uh, not very repentant. All right. Not very repentant. Uh, so I called that out and said, like, hey, a pastor shouldn't be behaving like this online. And this is the kind of stuff I get back. Uh, so this is from Darcy Regan. Reagan. Uh, Christ went to the temple, turned over tables and pulled out his whip. Pastor Mark is not a wimpy man and neither was Christ. Maybe you should focus your energy on understanding the good news was only a part of Christ's life on Earth. It's always the theology that gets you. <laughs> Like, it's like, okay, you like Mark Driscoll. That's fine. You know, everyone is going to run to this illustration of him being like Jesus because Jesus flipped tables one time. <laughs> one time he flipped tables and they're always like, well, you could flip tables a lot. Uh, <laughs> but all right, you want to do that. That's fine. But maybe you should focus your energy on understanding the good news was only a part of Christ's life on earth. Uh, I don't. I don't understand that. Uh, I don't think that's theologically sound, <laughs> but okay. All right. Well, thanks for that, Darcy. I appreciate it. Here we go. Number two. Five guys each for fighting. Uh, Marcel Elder responds to Mark Driscoll's accusations. This is one I just got <laughs> literally an hour ago uh, or well, about two hours ago now. Uh, so this is from, what is this? Spike, spikeable, spikeable, spikeable. And there's two S's there. So it's spikeable. Uh, would you mind removing the skull in your background? Uh, Jesus is the author of life, not death. No, <laughs> I like skulls. They are there for a reason to ward off some of the fundies and also because I just really enjoy them. So, uh, no, I will not take down the one skull that was in the picture. Instead, I added another one. Welcome to the penalty box. Number three. Four minute double minor penalty for I stick it. Was that funny? Was that funny, buddy? You like that? <laughs> I got a little critic with me. <laughs> um, so this is from why I don't watch the chosen, uh, which again, is literally the short that all I said was that's why I don't watch the chosen. I don't say you can't watch the chosen. I don't say the chosen is horrible. I say it's literally not for me and the comments I get about it from the chosen fans. Insane. Uh, this is from user blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Uh, but their first name starts with a K, I guess. Uh, movie houses are designed to sell people in human trafficking concierge slavery and therefore protestant christians to get as far away from the entertainment industry as possible hashtag save christians um what <laughs> movie houses which uh i gotta say that's the first time i've heard movie houses in uh, quite a while um and that's uh that's that's interesting that's an interesting one. Um, what do we got? We got Sliver. All right, delete it. Thanks, Heidi. Um, it's going to turn into a pink. Very cool. He's watching the Paw Patrol video. Uh, movie houses. Not haven't heard that one in a long time. So thank you for that. Bringing that back. I kind of like movie houses. It feels like old timey. Like let's go to the movie house. You know, like every. I don't know. 
black and white. That sounds fun. I might go to the movie house later. Um, you you think that's a cool skeleton light? Thank you, son. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, this is not what they're for. Uh, now, I will say there's some weird stuff in Hollywood. There certainly is, but there's weird stuff all over. Have you heard about what's happening in the SBC? Um, <laughs> but this is, come on. No, uh, this isn't a normal thing. You're not going to go to the movie theater and stuff is going to happen there. It's not like the people who are making you popcorn are like, ha ha ha. And we got you. We got you with the popcorn. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not happening. So this is someone who has spent way too much time on some weird reddit <laughs> and they're just they're just having a, a a good time they're having a good time just going through reddit stuff and all of a sudden they're just like oh, it's the truth <laughs> it's, no it's no no it's not but welcome to the penalty box let's head over to fundyville and bring it on down to fundy funny. it is funny <laughs> All right, uh, so this is one of my favorite things, okay? Um, I love that in 2024, every church has to, like, or at least not have to, but most churches live stream their services. And also, so many churches are making podcasts, and I love it. <laughs> like, guys, I am, I am a podcast junkie. When it comes to cringy Christian podcasts, <laughs> like I love trying to find them. I love, uh, like checking out and seeing, all right. Uh, I love checking out and seeing like what they're doing. I love to see the tech that some of them use and how much money they put into a shot and then how bad the image is. Like I care about all that tech stuff, right? Like that's why my stuff looks the way that it looks, uh, which isn't great. All right, but it's it's good enough for what I got. Uh, but I just love this. Uh, so we got between two ferns, IFB style. Let's see what they're talking about. You know, several years ago, I preached a series of messages here on the church on why the King James. Me and uh, three other men in our church, we sat down here, and uh, I had bought a little old NIV Bible. Uh, uh, we took the King James, took the NIV, and we started going through it and marking with a little yeah, marker everywhere that? there was a difference. Everywhere. Tell me what you think about that. <laughs> well, by the time we got done, the, the little NIV Bible was swelled out about this big because there's markers all over it. Man, I wish I brought it with me. I could have showed you. Mm -hmm. All over it, all around it, uh, things that were different, substantial changes. Mm -hmm. uh, See, they say, well, that's a minor change, and it's not really going to affect it, but it is not always yeah. a minor change. And, and one argument is they make it easier to understand yeah. by, by doing that. Yeah. Of course, we know that the King James Bible is written on, what is it, a, a sixth grade, fifth grade? I can't remember exactly. Um, but I, one fellow said years ago, I never have forgotten it. Mm -hmm. A lot of these What's newer it? versions leave out the blood. Oh. And at the time, he had a small child. He said, I've got a three-, four-year-old child, and they know where the blood is. It's not that you don't you don't leave out that word to make it easier to understand. There's a reason for leaving a, like you said, the de-emphasize that. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing, too, when you get to look your at argument who for, uh, for <laughs> the King James Version. I just love so much about this. <laughs> It's like funny that they're just talking about the King James version. So, like, there's still people. There's still people having that that fight and still thinking it's like the most important thing. Uh, but I love the font. I love that there's like like this cricket, like uh, the cricket brand, like putting like the acrylic or whatever it is vinyl onto the wall. I love having the two ferns. <laughs> I love that they're all sitting six feet away from the microphone. <laughs> Like, you know that there is like a 14 year old kid who did all kinds of research in like finding out like, how can we make this work uh, and getting all like the audio together. And then he's just like pulling out his hair because 80 year old Fundy is sitting nine feet away from the microphone. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's see here. The end. Who are behind a lot of these newer birds? Rupert Murdoch. He oh. owns copyrights on Bible versions. What does what business does Rupert wow. Murdoch have I didn't know that. in the in the Bible version business? 
it's a money. It's, it's, yeah. He's in it for the money. Of course, he's uh, Roman Catholic, and you know, but he's in it, in it for the money. There's all kinds of different people like that, though, that have had influence uh, in in these newer versions. And what I like about our King James is it's only influenced by God. That's you know, right. it's, it's just it's free and open. Amen. Um, Amen. For, only for influenced by God. It. Has nothing to do with all the people that made it. <laughs> All the arguments that a lot of these guys use, you could take it and just apply it to everyone who lived back then, right? Like you talk about Erasmus, but like they're, no, we're not going to do that. We're only talking about all these people who are on the board for the NIV. Come on. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And talking about fifth and sixth grade, it was written for fifth and sixth grade so everyone could understand it. Yeah, that's why it has superfluity of naughtiness in the. If you like the King James, go ahead and like it. But for you to be like, this is the one, nah, 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 nah. That's that's a that's a hard pass. That's a big yikes. Um, so that's the stream today, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, for everyone who is still here, please hit that like button if you like me, if you like the content, if you like what I said. Any of those things applies to you. Please do me the solid of just hitting the like button. It's not hard. I'm not asking for the moon. You want the moon, Mary? I'm not asking for it. Just hit the like button. And I would really appreciate it. I will see you guys at some point in the future. Bye.